All right. Somebody else asked about the fact that a single qubit can have a vector that's somewhere here on the surface of our block sphere. So this is our block sphere here. We define the north pole of the block sphere to be our zero state, and we define the, um, the south pole of the, of the block sphere to be our one state. Again, these are just labels we've attached to it. It could be anything. Um, it's also important to keep in mind that, generally speaking, this block sphere doesn't exist in the real world. This is a mathematical description of the physical system that we have. But it allows us to manipulate the state of the overall system um, in sort of a, uh, a mentally consistent model. So it allows us to do what we want to things. And we might do a rotation around the z-axis, or we might do a rotation, if this is our x-axis, we might do a rotation around the x-axis and whatnot as we go. So rotate about z, rotate about x, for example. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, Given that this position could be sort of anywhere along the block sphere here, anywhere along the surface of this, isn't this just like analog or fuzzy logic, or kind of like analog computing? What's the difference? Why is this not just analog computing? The answer is that the individual reversible operations, they kind of are analog operations. We can rotate, um, for example, if we were rotating around uh, the uh, x-axis we might rotate by um, pi over 2 or we might rotate by um, 0 0.9 times pi over 2 or 0 0.99 times pi over 2 whatever whatever value we want and so in that sense there's kind of something analog going on in the operations that we actually define but what happens is when we go to measure the system in fact this value gets projected onto one of the states. And so it will become either the zero state or it will become the one state. Depending, the probability of that will depend on where that exact angle is relative to the, uh, the North Pole. If, if our state is actually pointed at the North Pole, there's a 100% chance it's going to be zero when we measure it. If it's pointed at the South Pole, there's a 100% chance it's going to be one when we measure it. Here at the, the, the equator, it's going to be 50% chance of us projecting to zero or 50% chance of us projecting to one. And that's called a, a projection operation. So that projection um, or measurement is what gives us kind of the difference in the behavior compared to analog. So ultimately, the values you get out of a quantum computer are digital and we'll get one of the values from the 2 to the n possibilities for the, for the n qubits. But some of the manipulations do have some of the flavor of analog stuff, um, but it's not the same thing as analog computation. What do you think? Other comments? In the quantum computation, uh, if we don't use phase information, uh, it, the, there are almost no difference between analog computation and quantum computation, I guess. But uh, if we want to get uh, quantum acceleration, yeah, we need, uh, always we need phase information. Mm. And uh, that is the most important point of the difference between analog computation and quantum computation. Yeah, without that phase, we can't build the interference patterns properly that we want to use across the two to the n possible states. Yep. That's an important element of it. Mm -hmm. Hope that helps. <laughs>